What are some of the possible uses of a Matterport digital twin of a baseball stadium? If you pitch a baseball park, what are some of the ways that you might charge? And what are some of the hardest things about scanning a baseball stadium? Stay tuned. Hi all, I'm Dan Smakerod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, March 30th, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. What I learned from using a Matterport Pro 3 camera to scan a baseball stadium, and here to talk to us about that, is Scan Your Space founder and CEO Tom Sparks. Tom, thanks for being on the show again. Batter up. Bat, batter up. <laughs> uh, ready to pitch. We're, yeah. we're we're off to the races. I guess that's a, a, a different one. So, uh, Tom, uh, you're, you're the, the founder of Sparks Media Group. Uh, Scan Your Space is a division of, of uh, Sparks Media Group. Before we jump into today's topic, how about telling us about your two companies? Sure. Well, thanks for having me back. Um, so Sparks Media Group is the residential side of the the house. We provide uh, photos, video, floor plans, 3D tours uh, for the residential real estate market. Scan Your Space covers the entire kind of commercial, hospitality, industrial side of the house, where we provide photos, aerial, 3D tours, LIDAR scanning of uh, commercial spaces. Uh, you're in Sassoon City, uh, California, between San Francisco and Sacramento. Um, uh, but you, you, your coverage area is far beyond that. Can you can you fill us in on that? Yeah, we're covering um, all of California. Uh, we're covering Las Vegas. We're covering parts of Arizona. We are covering New Mexico and parts of Texas. And I'm trying to expand outward and take over the world. Uh, sounds great. So you can check out uh, Tom's uh, websites at uh, sparksmediagroup.com and scanyourspace.com. Uh, I reached out to Tom because he had, he was in the midst of scanning this huge baseball stadium. Uh, Tom, why don't you jump in? T tell us what the, 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 the scope of the project was. Yeah, so behind me, um, you can see is one of the images I took on one of the days scanning at the ballpark. Um, so the scope, uh, I was hired to capture a data file of the ballpark. That was one of the use cases um, that took the majority of the time. Uh, we used the Pro 3 mostly, or I used the Pro 3 mostly. Um, I provided 17 separate tours of the various areas. Uh, it was a total of 940 scans or so. Uh, we used the Pro 2 uh, to provide about eight different tour links of most of the inside spaces, and that was about 155 or so scans. Uh, it took three days, I want to say. Uh, the first two days was about five, maybe a little more than five miles walked each day. Um, many, many floors climbed according to the Apple Watch. Uh, the third day, um, was about the same five miles walked uh, you know more stairs climbed and i had a, a second photographer there helping me out with some of the um inside spaces with the pro 2 so all in all it was uh for me seven hours each day of the three days and then i had one of my other photographers there for about four hours doing um the pro 2 work sounds like a walk in the park <laughs> but i'm bumped so I, if I did my math right, uh, you delivered uh, 25 Matterport tours that totaled 1,100 scans between the Matterport Pro 3 camera, Matterport Pro 2 camera, uh, uh, walked 15 miles, uh, took uh, uh, nearly 24 hours, probably 24 hours if you included the additional team member. Uh, did you scan the entire stadium? Uh, um, the video, video froze a little bit here. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think you asked, did we do the entire stadium? Yes. We did 70% of it. We didn't have to do the boiler rooms or the mechanical rooms or anything like that. 
um, we did about 70%, I'd say. And I forgot to leave out one of the bigger numbers was um, uh, by our estimations, um, it was over 400,000 square feet in total that we scanned. Okay, so of the 400,000 square feet, I, I believe you scanned all the seats, the concourses, lounges, uh, at least one of the restaurants, some of the suites. Uh, am I leaving anything out? No. What was it? Uh, but you, you didn't scan the diamond itself. No, we did do the outfield. They were doing a lot of work on the uh, infield, the diamond area, and uh, they're very particular about keeping people off that when they're doing work. Uh, so they they kept us off it. <laughs> okay, and just for clarification, this is the Oracle Park Stadium in San Francisco that's right behind you. Correct. Yep. Okay. For the Giants. Uh, awesome. Um, anything else in terms of the scale and scope of what you uh, actually scanned? No, no. I mean, I I think that covered it. It was. Okay, awesome. So let, let's let's move into actually. Well, what do you learn from walking fifteen miles, scanning for almost twenty four hours, delivering twenty five tours, nearly eleven hundred scans? Uh, uh, you had prepped me with with with, with some of the uh, some of your learning. So let me see if I can prompt you with some some keywords sure. uh, and see if I can have you riff a little bit. Uh, start low. Start low, yeah. So um, I'm a firm believer that the Pro 3 can see better going up than it can going down. So if you start low on the field, you'll get a lot more usable data as you go up, um, kind of like trailing data or leading data as you go up, uh, which should help with alignment issues and possibly even coverage. I might be able to scan further apart and save the number of scan points. So I would have preferred to have started low. In this case, first day I had to start as high as the ballpark was, and work my way down. And the second day I started low and worked my way back up to the meeting point. And why is that? Why why couldn't you just start low if that's what your uh, thinking was? Uh, they had some field access issues or limitations on the first day, uh, so they didn't want anybody on the field at all. And that's that's why I started. But in a, a perfect world, you'd start low and, and work your way up and probably have a, a better scanning experience. Yeah. Uh, plan your route. Yeah. So, um, you know, providing good 3D tours, whether it's just for a data file or for marketing purposes or whatever the use case is, um, I prefer to have connected spaces, as few tours as possible. And by planning your route ahead of time, uh, you can see where those connection points are, whether it's a pedestrian ramp or an escalator. Um, where are the elevators to avoid because you can't scan in an elevator. Um, so yeah, planning your route, seeing how you're going to go about doing things, how you're going to move. Did you do a walkthrough uh, days prior to scanning? Did you do that as the first thing that you did when you showed up? Did you re look at uh floor plans before you began? What was, what was your approach? Um, I had some aerial images and a few inside the park aerial images that were pro provided to me by the client that had a preferred path that they would have liked me to take uh, in scanning. And it helped as a general guide, but it wasn't really useful. It wasn't reality. I mean, they had scan points every like 50 feet apart and rows, you know, so so many rows apart and that wasn't what I experienced when I was there so I kind of threw that out the window uh, but no I wasn't able to get in ahead of time and pre-plan it I would have liked to so that's something that I'm adding to my list for future projects okay uh, you mentioned elevators uh, elevators escalators can you talk a little bit uh, more about that yeah so stadiums are huge and there's multi-levels and there's some areas where just elevators can access so those had to be separate tours. Uh, there's some areas where there's escalators, but an escalator will go from the first level to the third and skip the entire second level. So just So uh, let's try that again. Yeah, sorry. 
that that sounds great. So uh, you're talking about different levels. Uh, you, you can't get you can't get there from here unless you're on an elevator. So did that essentially define? Well, that's going to be a separate tour because I can't go up, I can't go down. Yeah, just knowing what those those access points are, and you know whether you're starting on the first level and you need to get to the second before the third, just knowing what those levels are and where the points are is useful. Uh, uh, keeping a pattern. Yeah, that I mean, that's helpful just for the OCD aspect of seeing the scan points on the mini map. You want to have them nice and aligned and not kind of sporadically all over the place. Uh, so I tried to do that as, as much as possible, um, whether it was within aisleways or, you know, number of rows, um, keeping them as, as uniform and, and, and tight as possible was good. Um, mini map. The mini map. So what I've experienced with the Pro 3 is um, the mini map shows your coverage points, but it leaves a lot out that the camera is actually capturing. So when the tour is processed, you have a lot more filled in data. Um, so I guess that could be a good thing because, you know, if you're ensuring that the mini map is completely filled in, then you're bound to have plenty of overlap and plenty of extra data you don't need. Um, it could be a bad thing if you rely on that difference and you say, oh, well, you know, I can see that I got some what coverage here and then some what coverage there. So I should be good. Then you may end up missing something when it's actually processed. But for the most part, the mini map doesn't show all of what's actually going to be processed. So you actually got more, not less, more scan yeah, data yeah. than less. Uh, was there an example, I'm, maybe in the field, since you didn't scan the, the, the diamond, was that kind of a clue that you could see, oh, well, I, this is where the, the, the left fielder would normally stand. That's, that's as far as I was allowed to scan. Oh, I could see all the way in another 40 yards. Right. So, you know, I was doing kind of the outside of the field area and I said, oh, I didn't get that far in at all. And by the time the tour was actually processed, I surprisingly did get a lot more um, than I expected. Um, alignment errors. I got alignment errors, um, misalignments in areas where I didn't think that I would have them. Um, you know, I'm expecting alignment errors when something straight and all the seats look the same. Um, and I wasn't necessarily getting them there. I was getting them around the curved part of the stadium, kind of behind uh, home plate, but up high. Uh, and it would put the scan points that I just, the scan point that I just scanned in a place where I previously was. And so I had to use the, um, alignment tool in in the Matterport app and I I used it I think about 20-ish times give or take and it worked all but maybe three uh, so I was pleasantly happy about that kind of saved me what what is it didn't work mean it, it failed to align with where I wanted to put it so I would realign it where it should should have been and then it it wouldn't do it and uh gee this is almost 1,100 scans. Does this mean you literally looked at every scan point on your mini map to make sure that it was where you expected it? Yeah. Well, with the Pro 3, it was 940 scans. Yeah, looked at every single one of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so I'm guessing that after you processed, uh, gee, 25 different Matterport tours, that you were somewhat pleased because you didn't have uh, misalignment errors that would create problems for you when the tours were processed. Correct, yeah. Okay, um, uh, trim as you go. Yeah, that's just, that's a good rule of thumb whether you're doing a mobile home or a baseball stadium, um, you're there you can see where mirrors are, you can see where windows are, you can see where uh, 
splatter that you want to cut out is. So it's just good to trim as you go. It adds a little bit of time to the project, but I think it's invaluable because you'll spend more time in front of the computer or more time in, at your office looking at these mini maps, trying to trim it. And that's just tedious and painful. Uh, and, and did you run into a lot of mirrors? Not a lot of mirrors, but there was a ton of windows in, in the suite areas. Okay. Um, uh, bring supporting accessories. Yeah. So, you know, one of the first things I learned was I should have, I have a lot of family in the medical field and I should have talked to the doctors and nurses in the family to find out what kind of shoes they wear because the shoes that I had weren't it. Um, but yeah, supporting accessories. So um, battery packs, charging cables for the battery packs. Uh, I bought a couple larger battery packs that I'm super happy with. And um, the video that I release, I'll put a links to those um, products in there. But yeah, battery packs, charging cables. Um, make sure you have extra batteries. Make sure your batteries are charged. Um, I had an extra tablet on standby if I needed it. Um, then it can get down to everything such as layers of clothes. You know, it was freezing the first day I was there, but the second day it was warmer out. Uh, so layers of clothes, headwear to keep your head, you know, not sunburned and warm. Um, snacks, you know, I left all my stuff in one area. And by the time I ended up in the other area, it was so far away. I was lucky to have some snacks on me. Um, water, bring plenty of water. Uh, I, um, I'm confused. You're at a baseball stadium. No concessions? Yeah, I was just about to say that. I fully was like, great, I'm going to get to have a chocolate malt and hot dogs and, you know, it's going to be great. And I got there and there's nobody working there. It's, you know, not a baseball day. So they didn't have any food. Um, and so what I had to do the first day was I, I well, actually in the second day too, I door dashed uh, and just met the door dash driver right outside the stadium and got my food and went and ate it. Okay. Uh was there anything else that like you went, oh, forgot to bring that. Wish I had that with me. Not really. I made the, the mistake. My, my tablet has a neck kind of um, whatever you want to call it, strap. And I made the mistake of trying to move the strap from one corner of the iPad to the other. And I didn't have the this, this stupid little tool that gets that thin piece of string under the I don't know what it's called, but anyway, so I had to hand hold it the whole first day and that was annoying. So just make sure your equipment's all good to go uh, before you get on site. Sounds like you might be creating a checklist for the next stadium that you do. Yeah, it's a good thing to have. Um, I, you mentioned that you were going to share a video um, and publish it. So uh, let, let's talk about that just for a moment. Uh, so first of all, you're, you're, you often publish to the We Get Around Network forum. So we went ahead and created a special tag for you, Sparks Media Group. Uh, the short link to get there is wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group. Talk about the, the video that you're going to publish in the We Get Around Network forum. So um, I made a video and the video is entitled... Matterport Pro 3 scan of a baseball stadium tips and use cases for why a stadium should be scanned. Uh, I didn't touch specifically on kind of a walkthrough on why I did this. I didn't, I didn't do a walkthrough video like I normally would. Um, but I did talk about the project in general. And then I talked about a ton of use cases on why you would want to scan a stadium. And so that's the video I'm going to put out after we're done. Today. Yeah, so there, there's two places you can find that video. First of all, the We Get Around Network forum, uh, wganforum.com, or go right to the short link for all of Tom's content, wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group. You'll also be able to find it on Tom's YouTube channel at Sparks Media Group. Um, you were kind enough to share that video with me prior to today's show. I'm going to refer to it in a, a moment uh, to ask you some more questions. But before I do that, th obviously, this was a, a massive project. And even the thought of, of doing this, you, 
it was like, oh my gosh, how do I charge for this? So how did you charge for this? This was a unique uh, situation for me because, you know, houses I charge by the square foot, warehouses I charge by the square foot. Uh, the client found me through my YouTube channel and he started off the conversation with, um, are you a sports fan? And I said, yeah, you know, go Warriors, go Giants, go 49ers. And he goes, well, that's great. We have a project um, at the ballpark the Giants play at. And right there I was in, sign me up. Um, so he said, you know, how do you charge for this? And I said, well, normally by the square foot, how many square feet do we need to scan? And he says, I have no idea. It could be 200,000. It could be a million square feet. Uh, so I knew that that wasn't going to work. So um, we came up with a day rate idea. So I, I charged this particular project on a day rate. Now that you've done all this scanning, three days, 15 miles, 25 Matterport tours, 1,100 scans, multiple pieces of equipment, an additional person helping you. Are you still happy that you charged a day rate? You know, I think I think I would charge a day rate. Um, I would adjust it now that I understand the amount of work that's involved in it. Um, and I might have a caveat of if it goes over a certain amount of square footage, it's going to be X amount more. Um, because ultimately, if I'm going to provide a BIM file or a floor plan or even just a rough square footage of what I scanned, uh, those are always charged by the square foot for the most part. So, yeah, I think I would do a, a day rate plus a caveat of if it goes over this amount of square feet, this is what it's going to be. Okay. Um, uh, use cases. Now, I, I can imagine the client engaged you for one particular use case, but I could also imagine while you're scanning for three days times seven hours a day, you're thinking, well, gee, I wonder what else this baseball stadium could be used for. And you shared some notes ahead of time. So I'm going to prompt you from your list. Sure. Uh, uh, Architects, Engineers, Construction, AEC. Yeah, so this ballpark was uh, started, I, I put it in the video, I think it was started in 97 and finished in 2000. Your audio is breaking up. So uh, Tom will fix that and we'll, we'll, we'll continue on. You want to try it again? How's this now? Sounds good. So let, let me start that sentence again. So uh, you, you had um, sent me a list ahead of time. So I want to prompt you from your list and just ask you to expand on that. Uh, architects, engineers, construction, AEC. Yeah, so this ballpark uh, is 23 years old. And uh, they didn't have any data files that they could provide me or my client, um, whether that was blueprints, floor plans, they didn't have anything. So that right there is a use case. Uh, an as-built scan of the ballpark uh, is helpful for anything related to remodels, construction, all that sort of thing. And actually, while I was there, they they had contractors doing work there. Uh, so it seems to be a the, the space that's updated pretty frequently. Um, so that's a huge use case right away is, is just having an as-built scan of the ballpark for current, current needs. Anything else on AEC related? Uh, that was, you know, the most important part of it, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, training. So the, uh, the staff was super friendly, um, but a lot of the people that were showing me around were probably used to sitting in an office, you know, in front of a computer, and they weren't necessarily familiar with all the areas that I needed to scan. Uh, and so I think for training purposes, uh, if you're bringing on new staff, you could provide them a 3D tour of the ballpark and say, here's the ballpark, here's, you know, this lounge, here's the, this suite and uh you know they can familiarize themselves with the park uh, via the 3d tour uh facilities management 
That's a big one. Um, I didn't get to see all the areas, but as I was walking through, I noticed a generator room. I noticed um, an electrical room, um, the the boilers and, and stuff like that. So imagine being able to tag all those assets with make and model and serial number. There's a lot of um, devices that are connected, you know, Internet of Things devices where you can get real time data from temperature sensors and all that. So we can scan the ballpark and embed those um, links uh, on the 3D tour and it would help with uh, if, you know, a generator went out, you would know where it is um, based on the scan. Um, you can measure flooring, you can measure walls, you can measure windows if things ever need to be painted or replaced. Count light fixtures. Vendor use, what does that mean? So I put vendor use, uh, me as a vendor, um, when it was time for a lunch break, uh, I had to remember how to get back down to my car. I was fortunate enough to be able to park inside the stadium, but I got, it was like a mouse in a, in a maze. I got, you know, I ended up in some weird places. Um, so to be able to provide a 3D tour and say, okay, here's where you're going to start and here's where you're going to be working. And that's the path. Uh, stick to it so I don't end up, you know, in the vice president's office of baseball operations or, you know, the announcer's booth. Okay. Insurance. Uh, so, you know, risk assessment, claims management, that sort of thing. Um, you scan the ballpark and you have an accurate uh, documentation of what's in there. And if there's ever a loss, whether that's an earthquake, we're in the Bay Area, or, you um, if there's a fire or a flood, uh, you have that documentation of what was at the park at the time, you know, or prior to the loss. Marketing and promotion. Well, um, this ballpark has been rented out for private events. I actually did uh, photography for a, a bacon event there one time. Um, Kanye West rented it out to propose to Kim Kardashian. So there's, you know, things where if it's being rented out, somebody may want to know the size of a room so they can decorate ahead of time or, you know, plan the decorations ahead of time. Uh, so it's good in that aspect. Um, there's some fans, for example, who um, aren't able to get to a stadium to enjoy a game, but they want to still kind of experience what it's like being in the ballpark. Um, I have a friend who had a stroke and he's not as mobile as, as he used to be, but he wants to go to um, the LA Rams game. SoFi Stadium, I think. It's really nice. Uh, so imagine being able to scan that and send him a link and he can go explore it on his own. And then when he's watching the game on TV, he can feel like he's, you know, been there. So those are some some key aspects I liked about it. Uh, other marketing and promotion use cases? Um, ticket sales. Uh, there's um, There's companies out there that can provide simulated views of what seat a fan would buy so a fan buys a seat they want to know what view they're going to get of the field uh there's companies out there that can take the scan data and and provide that render i guess is what you want to call it mm -hmm. i i think you scan some suites i i would imagine it's a similar thing if you're you, you're going to go buy or lease or rent or however that works. Uh, you you want to know what your suite looks like before you you get there. Yeah, yeah. And and I heard just on the news yesterday that um, Levi Stadium, where the 49ers play, they're going to borrow $120 million to add a bunch of seats, but also, I think, nine new suites. So imagine being able to scan the existing suites and maybe even using some of that data to render what views would look like of the new suites and then you could get that out to the public so that borrowing money would be a little easier um your, your notes to me had talked about historic pres preservation do you want to comment on that yeah so i think a lot of the ballparks are fairly new but some of the older ones um you know being able to go in and scan what the ballpark looks like for historic purposes. So when they are demolished, you have that record of this is how it used to look back in the day. Imagine, you know, seeing what the Roman Colosseum looked like intact now, it'd be huge. Did they do a Matterport scan uh, back when they built it? The Roman Colosseum? Uh-huh. Could they have? Um, you know, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> 
they built pyramids before they had a lot of technology. So who knows? <laughs> uh, emergency preparedness. Yeah. So that's, you know, uh, I, when I hear that, I immediately think about the, you know, the unfortunate like school shootings that happen. Um, but it could also carry over to any public venue. Um, there was back in 89, the Battle of the Bay, where the Giants were playing the A's and the, the earthquake happened out here, the Loma Prieta earthquake. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in an earthquake, but what they teach you in school versus what happens in reality is completely different. They teach you get in a doorway. Uh, but when the earthquake happens, you're kind of just like, and you freeze and you don't know what to do. Um, but it, so going back to emergency preparedness, having a scan of a ballpark would be huge in helping first responders. If a area collapsed, they could see kind of where the, what the structure looked like before the collapse. Um, if there was a, a shooting situation or whatever it is, they could know the quickest route to get there. Um, uh, evacuation routes, if there's a fire and you know, you can kind of plan the quickest way to get out. That may be different than what was drafted originally because the park had changed so much. Um, we, we, we went through eight categories, seven categories of use cases, but was there anything else that you, you thought about that uh, of how just overall categories while you're walking around, oh, this would be great for this use or that use? Not, no, I mean, I think that, I was thinking about customer service is, is one thing, um, you know, I don't go into the mall back in the day and you're asking, you know, where hot dog on a stick is and the person at the information counter doesn't eat hot dogs. So they don't know how to tell you where to get there. Um, but it, it would be good, you know, for customer service, uh, people at the park, um, who may not travel around the park that much to be able to know where things are, or at least have a general idea. Uh, well, that'd be a uh, matter tag worthy hot yeah. dog on a stick concession. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I was at the Chase Center watching a Warriors game, and uh, my wife wanted a churro, and I was like, "It's they sh they should have a churro around here." And I went to like five different people, and nobody knew. And some random janitor <laughs> said, "Oh yeah, the churro's up in the bar that you can't access because you didn't buy the good seats." Um, so it'd be nice to you know have that information without having to miss half of the game. <laughs> cool. Uh, let me ask you some some random questions. Uh, sure. You know, you, you use the Matterport Pro 3 and the Matterport Pro 2. Why, like, okay, you bought the Pro 3. Why did you add Pro 2 scans? Uh, mainly because the my photographer uh, had a Pro 2. Um, I only had one Pro 3 available at the time. Um, and it was inside spaces, so we didn't really need a Pro 3 inside. It, it, it wasn't that there was some capability of the Pro 2. It was just that enabled you to, to double up and have two, two uh, uh, Matterport service providers creating content simultaneously. Correct. Yep. Um, did you get any feedback from your client? Um, they hadn't done a space this large. So they were expecting it to be a little quicker than it, than it was. And I think, you know, totally tooting my own horn that I'm one of the most efficient people I know at scanning, uh, just by the way that I think and, and how long I've been doing it. So uh, they, you know, but once I explained it to them and showed them the data, they were totally blown away with it. The, the amount that I was able to capture, um, the detail that the Pro 3 captured. Yeah, so they were they were happy with it. Um, overall, were you happy that that you, that you had the Matterport Pro Three camera? Hasn't been out all that long. Could you have done this project without it? Were you happy with it? I was happy with it. I actually uh, took a BLK three hundred and sixty, the the first version there, um, and did literally three scans. And I put it back in the case. Um, this is the Leica BLK three hundred and sixty first generation scanner. Works with Matterport. Why did you, Why did you put it back in the case? Did you just decide it was going to take forever in a day? It to... take, yeah, it was like four minutes to scan. And um, well, this is not going to work. <laughs> yeah, and there was some. Even at that, there was some alignment issues. And you know, with the Pro three, 
if you're going to get an alignment issue or even with the pro two, you're going to get it within, you know, 45 seconds, um, 50 seconds total from start to finish, uh, with the the blk 360 you have to wait four minutes to find out there's an alignment issue you're kind of like oh man so do you recall what setting you had it on was it on okay at all excellent it was on like the medium density um yeah. i wanted to try to keep it as apples to apples with the pro 3 as i could so is there anything that you could have accomplished with the BLK 360 that you couldn't do with the Matterport Pro 3 camera? I'm looking at the stadium behind you. There, there's some overhang. I mean, was there a point where you're in you're in the seats that are below, I don't know what you call that, but you're in the seats below the overhang. Could you have seen up to the ceiling? I mean, could did the Pro 3 capture the ceiling or it, it was irrelevant for your client anyway, didn't matter? Yeah, the Pro 3 did capture the overhang, so that wasn't uh, a huge issue. No, I, I yeah, you know, I'm, I just think with the Pro 3 out, it, it's kind of, it kind of, for me, is a first-generation BLK 360 killer. Um, I hear that the second generation is much quicker, so, you know, that may be a good video, second generation versus the Pro 3. Yeah, so Matt Matterport has announced that they will support the Leica BLK 360 second generation, but as far as I know, they haven't put a date to that. Yeah. Just, uh, yes, we're going to support it. Um, <clears throat> was there was there anything else where when you think about the scanning ex experience that you would approach would have approached this project differently? Um. Aside from just starting at the at the field and working my way up, no, I think I did it. Luckily, you know, I have enough experience. Again, to, totally tooting my own horn, I have enough experience where I wasn't kind of questioning how to do this or which which way is the best method. I kind of knew what to do uh, for the best results. Um, there was one area uh, towards um, right field uh in the upper reserve that i didn't scan due to timing limitations on the first day so the first day i did the whole upper reserve area and uh i had a hard stop because the escort that was showing me around that day she had to leave and it was you know seven hours that day um so i didn't get to finish but the client said that that was okay they had enough data where i was at that they didn't need that but now that I look back at the model, I'm like, man, I wish I would have been able to finish that. So I, at some point, if I'm lucky enough to get back there, I'm going to scan that upper area. So um, you mentioned, uh, well, I, I think I would say this. Um, you've, you've been on the, the show uh, th three previous times, two of them. One was 10 pro tips for scanning with the Matterport Pro 3 camera. The other was when and why I use a Matterport. Matterport Pro 3 camera and even other cameras. So you've obviously have been doing this a long time. Uh, uh, you've done other super large spaces, large projects. Uh, you've now accomplished this. I can imagine there's some Matterport service providers that are watching this show thinking, oh, I have a baseball park in my hometown. There is eight different use cases. That, uh, uh, how, can you help them? How do you help them? How might you be involved with, with their project? Yeah, I've actually talked to a few people um, that have reached out via Facebook, reached out via your form, uh, via private messenger, and just said, hey, I saw that you were working on this. Can you provide some feedback? Um, and I'm, you know, happy to hop on calls and, you know, maybe maybe charge a small consultation fee for that. Um but yeah, yeah, I'm happy to give any advice I can. So is it the kind of thing they might be able to partner with you, subcontract work to you, engage you, bring you in? I, I could imagine, you know, I'm in a local market. I, I have relationships, trusted relationships, but uh, the, the thought of going to scan three full days, five full days of a, of a, a stadium might actually be totally overwhelming. And uh, you don't know what you don't know, and then you get into a problem, and now you've you've committed to a very large project, and you're stuck, and you can't deliver it. So, 
is are you thinking about that at all that there might be Matterport service providers that actually just bring in Sparks Media Group to to subcontract the part project with you or partner with you on the project? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've offered B two B business to business pricing uh, for other business owners, other MSPs who who want to do it, and you know they may have limitations. They may have a ton of work elsewhere that they just can't dedicate the time to it. They may have health limitations. I'm not the most, you know, uh, in, in most fit person. Uh, you know, that was a, a workout walking up and down those stairs. So, yeah, I can imagine some people wouldn't want to do it. Mobility issues. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to help out where I can. Uh, e even in terms of just consulting to say uh, this, this is what I've been asked to quote on uh, to be able to uh, perhaps uh, fill in some of the blanks of uh, scale and scope kinds of equipment, kinds of questions to ask the client, trying to understand use case, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Understanding yeah. the use case is a huge part of it. Um, knowing exactly what they want it for, exactly, you know, and a lot of uh, clients. Well, in fact, did that affect how you scan? Because I, 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 I did note in your video. You, I think you talked about you kind of did every ten cases. You took ten steps yeah. and scanned. W would you have done this differently if it was going to be used in different ways? Meaning, you you might have had the scans closer together, or you might have had the scans farther apart. Yeah, I mean, you know, doing it for an as-built construction file, you may not need. So uh, if you could pick it up, uh, a construction file, as-built. Yeah, can, can you hear me okay? Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, the construction file, I need specific scan points in certain areas uh, versus if you were doing it for marketing purposes, you may want to show right in front of the particular food uh, re restaurant so you can see the menu, right? Like you don't necessarily need that information for an as-built file. So yeah, that, that would affect knowing the use case and what they're going to use it for. Would it impact how I'm going to scan? Um, and some clients have a mentality of, Oh, you know, we'll just kind of one size fits all. We'll have you scan the park and then we can use it for X, Y, and Z. And it's not always, it's not always that way. So did your client engage you for I need the following spaces scanned? And that might take three, five, seven, ten days to do, or did they say, hey, I got we'll engage you for three days, get as much done as you can? Yeah, they had a list of spaces. And they estimated it would take four days. Um, they didn't have a problem if I went over that, but I don't like to waste time and or money. So I was just, you know, knocking it out as I could. Knocking it out of the park. Good job on that. So, um, and, and and when you, you talked about seven hour days, I mean, and you did you did, did you like literally take breaks? I mean, you had lunch. We we know you had DoorDash delivered at least two of those days. Um, yeah. Did 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 do you build that in to say I just I I need to take breaks, otherwise I'm going to kill myself doing this. Yeah, I mean, I definitely you know took took bio breaks, bathroom breaks. Um, I, I took some breaks to go grab my water. Uh, I, I carry a big gallon of crystal geyser around when I'm doing projects and I drink that throughout the day. So I took some water breaks and I took a lunch break. Uh, and that, you know, it wasn't a, I don't think it was up to Cal OSHA or, you know, whatever the labor enforcement board is out here standards, but definitely took, you know, a good 45 minutes out of the day to replenish myself. So <clears throat> before we finish up here, is there anything that we haven't talked about, about what you learned from using a Matterport Pro 3 camera to scan a baseball stadium? Is there anything that we, gee, oh, we should have talked about the following? Yeah. Um, I, I can't think of anything. I think we 
covered a lot of it. Um, Let's talk about your blog post, your video, other yeah. things that you're going to share even beyond being on today's uh, show. Yeah, so I made uh, a video and I went over, I showed the mini map of some of the scans that I did, uh, where you can see the, the scan patterns. Uh, and I talked about that a little bit. Um, I showed kind of a high level overview of the actual tour. I didn't show the specific I'm not going to share the tour link um, or the actual tour, but I showed, you know, the dollhouse view of that. And then I went into detail about all the use cases. Um, so I think that's going to be super helpful. So I put the, all that together in a video and I'll release it, you know, when we're done with the call. And then I have a blog post, which is just a text version of the use cases that I'll also put in the forum as well so that uh, people can see that and feel free to cut and paste it and use it for your own needs. Awesome. So uh, if you want to see Tom's video, which, which is really awesome, because I, I, I thought it was really helpful to take a look at your mini maps, and you are very precise in terms of how you do the the, the, the rows, the seeds, uh, they're, they're straight lines. So it's very, it's very or, organized and meticulous. So talking about planning your route, it looked like you, 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 uh, you had a mission and you, you stuck to it. So uh, you can see all these uh, mini maps, the, the 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 tour within Tom's video. Uh, he will be posting it to the We Get Around Network forum, uh, wganforum.com. Uh, he mentioned his uh, his blog post. He'll uh, uh, post that in the We Get Around Network forum as well. Really, just as soon as we finish up today, you can uh, a. a quick short link to get to all of Tom's assets in the We Get Around Network forum, all the content that he publishes, wgan.info forward slash Sparks Media Group. Uh, you can search by tags in the forum and there's a tag Sparks Media Group. And then I'd also encourage you to check out Tom's uh, websites. Uh, he has two of them for his real estate photography business, sparksmediagroup.com, and then one specific for uh, scanning, and that's scanyourspace.com. Uh, uh, again, uh, Tom is based in Sassoon City, California, halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento. Um, uh, Tom, you, you hit it out of the park. You know, uh, real quick, I just, you know, just a general rule, um, this doesn't have to apply to just stadiums. This could be arenas, this could be soccer fields, this could be convention centers. Um, so take what we talk about and apply that to the large space that, that you have. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, you know, part of the reason I in invited you to be on the show is <clears throat> anytime someone does an incredibly huge project there's so much learning that comes from that. And uh, you've been very gracious to share with the community what you've learned, what problems you've had, what challenges you had, even your strategy for pricing. Uh, I just think this is, is, is really is like a gift to the community to, for you to share uh, what you learned from walking 15 miles uh, creating 25 Matterport tours, doing 1,100 scans uh, of obviously uh, an incredibly large uh, space. And I, I hope you uh, just for your personal gratification get to go back to the stadium to, to fill in the diamond and the way up in the in the corner so you feel like, oh, I really wanted to have a tour of the entire stadium, uh, yeah. even if you don't have a client that needs those two pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel your pain. You really you really wanted to have literally the entire ballpark. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Tom, thanks for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. We've been visiting with Sparks Media Group founder and CEO Tom Sparks. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN.